Hello and welcome to the channel. Uh, my name is Johnny and you're watching Hillbilly Modeling. It's time for a new project and this is what we're going to be building. This is TACOM's M31 US Tank Recovery Vehicle and uh, 135th scale and that's our new project. So I think the best thing to do is to jump down on the bench and uh, get started on this. So we'll go ahead and uh, take a look at our instructions here. So what we're looking for is step one, and of course that's going to be the assembly of the lower hull. So there's that uh, breastplate for the front, and uh, let's see, we got some rollers for our main winch to go in, and of course the back plate. But before we can put those on, we have some holes to drill. So we're going to have to go ahead and drill those holes in the plate. So in the bottom uh, of the main hull section here, uh, as you can see, there are three holes that we need to drill out at one millimeter because there is a plate that is going to go on uh, underneath there on the very bottom uh, of the vehicle. Now in the uh, breast plate here, which is also our transmission cover, um, we have two holes uh, that we need to drill and that's going to be for the brackets that's going to hold the spare road wheels that's going to go on the front of the vehicle. So I do mark those uh, with the drill bit and then we're going to go ahead and drill them out with our handy drill by Tamiya. Now these holes are 1.2 millimeter and we're just going to go ahead and shoot those holes through. And also for our uh, towing pencil that's going to go on the very back, uh, the bracket itself has two alignment holes here in the bottom of the plate. So we're going to go ahead and shoot those holes through, shoot, <laughs> drill those holes through. Now the locator is kind of like a little half moon slot. Just get your drill bit down in the bottom of that slot and just drill it straight out the back. That's all you got to do. Now with all of our holes drilled, we can go ahead and uh, install these rollers. Now these are for the main winch. Uh, they're actually just there for looks. It's not <laughs> really uh, functional. Uh, and we have a cover that holds those down into place. And we'll just put a little bit of cement on those uh, right there on the cover. And it kind of pinches those rollers in. Uh, they, they will roll, but... Uh, I don't really think anybody's going to see these things, but it's a nice detail. So on to our transmission cover, and it is a good fit. Uh, now you probably noticed that uh, this video is a little bit different uh, than some of my previous videos because I didn't show you me cutting the parts off the spruce and all that. I figure if you've seen a couple of me, a couple of these videos with me doing that. Uh, that's probably enough, <laughs> so we will forego that. So once we get our transmission cover on, we can go ahead and attach um, the rear plate there for our engine bay. And uh, we're just gluing right around uh, the bottom portion of it there. Now for the sponsons, uh, we're not going to glue those yet, okay? So as you can see here, there is kind of an angle between the bottom of the sponson and the plate where it's supposed to fit uh, nice and snug up against those tabs. So there is a little bit of bow here where those sponson plates are kind of angled down. So I'm just going to take a piece of wood here and uh, a couple of clamps and we're going to take and draw that up into place. And as you can see there, that is some movement there. And uh, that's kind of, you, you don't want to leave that gap there because that's going to affect the side plates that's going to go into the upper hole. So once we get it clamped into place, we can go ahead and glue that down. And then I'm just going to go ahead and put a little pressure on it to make sure that I don't have any gaps uh, between that rear plate and those sponsons as well there, those bottom sponson plates. So now we're going to go on. Uh, I, we are going to deviate a little bit uh, from our instructions. We're not going to put these uh, final drive covers on yet 
so that I don't get them all mixed up. I have taken a permanent marker and marked inside them uh, what their part number is. That way I can get them to the on the, on the right side, or the, I should say the correct side when we go to put them on, because uh, we're going to wait and do that in step two. Because in step two, we have the covers that goes on our final drives, and I think it's going to be much better for our alignment purposes uh, to put those covers on first. So next up, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put the slack adjusters together. Now these are the mounts for our idlers. Um, so uh, we will go ahead and assemble those. So I do have them separated into a couple of different cups here, marked A and B. That's assemble A and assembly B. Uh, that way we don't mix up what side <laughs> we put these on uh, when we do our or our assembly to the hull. Now this is just a two-piece affair, and all we need to do is to uh, go ahead and put these together. Now there is just a little bit of cleanup on these. Um, I'm not going to show you me doing all that cleanup, <laughs> so <laughs> it, it's not a lot. Uh, this kit is really good. Uh, as far as alignment and not having uh, any flash, you'll just find just a little bit of an edge sometimes on some of the parts, um, and it cleans up really well. So we'll just go ahead and glue this one together, and of course, you know, we have the, uh, the B side to do as well. And these two sides, they are different, so... Do not mix them up. That's why we need to make sure that we uh, keep them labeled correctly until we install them. So going back to our instructions, uh, we can go ahead and install uh, these slack adjusters and also that bottom plate where we drilled the holes in and then we'll deal with the, uh, uh, the final drives, uh, covers, and housings. So after giving these uh, Sponson bottom plates here plenty of time to dry to the back plate there on our hull, uh, we can go ahead and remove our clamps. And now uh, it's time to go ahead and attach um, these slack adjusters, uh, which is also the mounts, of course, for the idlers uh, for our tracks. And they are a really snug fit, so you just need to press them into place and just check the alignment. Just make sure that you get them fully seated uh, before you apply your glue. Now these parts do have a really positive fit. However, uh, it's a, always a good idea to check and make sure that they are uh, at 90 degrees from the side of the lower hull there and they're perfectly lined up because our idlers are going to go on this and that's going to affect our track alignment too. So we want to make sure that they're straight and um, we haven't made any mistakes here. So next up, we'll go ahead and put that extra plate uh, that this hole has uh, in place and it simply fits in the holes that we pre-drilled and then we'll just glue it down. Now we can turn our attention to our final drive housings and covers, just making sure that we've picked the correct part for whichever side we're going to do. And you can see how uh, these parts go together. Um, and it's really important that we have a flush fit from uh, the side of the hull to the actual uh cover it's or not the cover but the housing itself and that cover is going to help us get into that uh, straight alignment there just in case there's a little gap somewhere uh, we can make sure that everything is fitting flush and these parts practically snap together as you can see here uh, they just hold themselves right in uh, against the hull so that's not a problem and then we just glue those up so alignment is key here because we don't want anything kind of wonky going on with our um, drive sprockets. So you just want to check and make sure that everything looks right before we move on. And it does. So um, we're, we're in good shape there. 
But now there are some gaps uh, around those final drive housings. So we're going to use this perfect plastic putty, which is a water-based uh, filler. And that will fill uh, these little voids that we've got, uh, which I don't think are actually supposed to be there. I think these uh, covers were actually cast in uh, to the end sections of the transmission cover. So we're going to go ahead and put this on. And we're going to let this completely dry, and then we'll come back and clean it up. Since it's water-based, it'll be an easy cleanup. So going back to our instructions here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and work on our drive sprocket, uh, which is two pieces. And then we also have our idlers, which is, uh, uh, consists of a total of four pieces. So our drive sprockets are a simple affair. It's only two pieces, and they are keyed. Uh, so you want to make sure that you get those keys aligned in their correct slots. And that's going to keep the alignment for the outer and inner drive sprockets aligned, which is important for putting our tracks together. And also, uh, we'll do the idler. Uh, it has two locator uh, pins uh, on the cap itself, and we just want to make sure we get those lined up. And the reason why they didn't cast this piece in is because it does have a flange detail, which would be hard to do. Uh, or impossible uh, in a mold so it is a separate piece and then we have our outer rings uh, which adds an extra detail there uh, it gives the part more depth and so we'll have to glue those into place and there's one on either side and as you can see there that nice detail uh, it gives us that extra depth and that looks really good really fine detail here so moving on in our instructions, we're ready to do our bogies. And uh, as you can see here, there's quite a few parts. Uh, but <laughs> looking at the instructions, the flow is kind of strange because it, well, as you can see here, uh, it doesn't really flow exactly uh, the way that you would expect. Uh, that you would have to do for your assembly. So you're going to have to assemble it and pay attention to it and also we have uh, some parts that we're going to have to cut off of the sprue and add to the arms a little extra detail that wasn't molded onto the actual part uh, before we actually get to the center picture which is uh, the assembly of these parts um, so as you can see here I have the parts divided up uh, into sub assemblies so once I've cleaned everything up, I put each one into a different cup. And then if there is the possibility of mixing up which side goes where, I have the part number uh, in the cup with it. And as you can see here, these are the volute springs. And then those arms that the springs go uh, and put pressure on. Then we have our rollers and our outer section um, of the housing itself. And as you can see, there's quite a few parts here. So <laughs> keeping them all separate and build them up in little sub-assemblies before you get to the final assembly of each bogey is kind of key to success here, I think. So it's easier to go ahead and clean everything up. That way, when, when you start your assembly, uh, everything is right where it's supposed to be. Just don't get mixed up on what you're doing and make sure that you stack your cups back up correctly so that you're not confused later on. So we're going to start off this assembly uh, with the actual backing plate where it is bolted to the uh, lower hull and we're going to attach it to the inside half of our bogey housing there and it kind of snaps together. It's a really tight fit so alignment issues don't really exist here. Um, you just want to make sure that we get uh, the glue on it there and that to me extra thin will uh, kind of wick right up underneath it. Now we do have a left and right bracket that goes on to uh, this housing here and it has those little bulges on them for the uh, volute springs so it's important that we get these lined up correctly. 
Uh, the parts are molded very well, so it's it's not an issue getting them into place. Just make sure uh, that you got them fully seated and that they are lined up correctly. And I want to make sure that the top edge too is all the way against that before mentioned uh, backing plate, so that everything uh, is going to line up when we get all these parts together. So next up is our volute springs. Now it does have a center shaft in between them. And that's what these uh, arm links uh, go to. As you can see, it's kind of bowed in the middle a little bit uh, where it slides onto the pin. Just make sure that it bows in towards the volute springs. You don't want to put these in uh, the opposite way because that will cause problems later on uh, when we go to align them with the actual road wheel arms. And as you can see, it is a loose fit and you're not supposed to glue these in. So uh, this is supposed to be a workable uh, suspension if I do this right. And <laughs> hopefully uh, we'll get all six of them together and they'll all work. So it is a little bit fiddly here. Uh, trying to get that pressed into place uh, and I do drop it a couple of times but that's kind of par for the course here just trying to make sure that everything gets seated correctly now once our volute springs and arms are in place uh, we need to put our support roller in and it just goes on the little pin on the top of the housing there and now we're ready for the uh, the attachment of the outside section. So what I'm going to do is just above those volute springs, I'm going to put a little glue there, uh, or to me extra thin cement, uh, to kind of tack that into place for us. And then we'll just press the whole thing together. And as you can see, it's important to get that roller lined up, and then uh, my volute springs fill out. So, <laughs> uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this back together. Uh, and as, you know, when you're, when you're working with all these little bitty parts, it, it kind of can be a little frustrating until you kind of get it down. <laughs> I, I imagine by the time we get the sixth one done, uh, we should be an expert on this. Uh, so, the glue hasn't set up and we didn't have very much on it to begin with so we'll be able to press this back into place just want to make sure that I do get it seated and that pin that's in between the volute springs fit into slots so we need to get that pressed in and all the way back into those slots uh, sounds confusing well it kinda can be but uh, once you get it in there it, it does fit it's just a really, really snug fit there. But as you can see, uh, it does go together, and the alignment is fine uh, once we get everything attached. And so I'm just going to put a little bit of extra to me, extra thin there on those brackets uh, to make sure that everything stays lined up. And I'm going to use my self-clamping uh, tweezers here to kind of hold the ears of those top brackets into place against that center housing. So now we're going to look at uh, our road wheel arms, and as you can see here, uh, they want us to cut off uh, this bolt detail, which is actually on the sprue itself, and install those on the outer arm, and that'll be where the, uh, the third pin, I guess we'll call it, uh, goes. And so you have a left and a right, so it's important that you put them on the correct outside arm section. Uh, that way everything will go together. As you can see here, uh, this is the outside section uh, of one of the road wheel arms. And then we have those little bitty uh, bolt details that we're going to trim off of this sprue. Um, and then it'll have to be placed very carefully uh, right where that secondary pin is supposed to come through the the arm itself so with all that hashed out 
uh, it's time to cut one off. And just be very careful when you're do, doing this. Uh, sharp objects can be a problem, uh, especially with your fingers so close to them. So I'm just going to kind of rotate around the uh, uh, actual bolt detail there on the sprue. Thank goodness that these Tacom sprues are nice and flat. And as you can see, there's that little bitty part. Uh, if, if I can get it to focus. Yep, there we go. That's the part that we're going to be putting on. So, we're going to put a little dab of glue here. And then we're going to very carefully align that part uh, in our tweezers and put it on the glue. And we want to make sure that it is straight across from uh, that pin that's going to travel between the arms there. So once I'm satisfied with it being lined up exactly where it needs to be, and you can see uh, that's a nice little detail. I don't know why they didn't mold this in, but they just didn't. So they've added it on, and uh, we're going to go ahead and put them on. So you can do them one at a... Whoops. I hope everything's still there. Yeah, okay. So... Um, We've got, uh, let's see, 11 more to do. So when it comes time to cut these all off, I decided probably the best thing for me to do is to put a glove on, which I probably should have done before I even started because eh, keeping my skin intact uh, <laughs> on my fingers is uh, kind of a primary consideration for me. So I decided to put that glove on. And then go ahead and, and trim these uh, little bolt uh, details off uh, and doing everything I can to make sure I don't lose any. So we do have 12 additional ones. So uh, they only want us to put them on the outside uh, arms. So you, you're not going to be able to see them if you put them on the inside, but it wouldn't hurt to put them on the inside too. Uh, but since they're not going to be seen, I'm not going to worry about that part. Now, when we go to assemble our road wheel arms, there are a square pad that faces up on, on each one of the arms. So you need to keep track of that. Uh, just in case you kind of mix up your parts a little bit, you want to make sure that those pads are facing up on both arms. And we're just going to put a little bit of glue here on the bracket where it attaches to the axle shaft itself and then to the pivot points. And uh, we'll go ahead and, and assemble this. And the parts are made very well. Just make sure that you don't get too much glue on it there because we do want our road wheels to still be able to, to roll. And I think I mentioned before that these are fully operational uh, road wheel assemblies. So if you wanted to put... Uh, a workable track uh, on on this kit and have a fully working suspension uh, that would uh, be one of your options uh, just be careful with how much glue you use here or or cement <laughs> some people get upset if you call uh, model cement glue but um, yeah I got a little bit of extra there we just need to wipe that off don't want to be transferring that around the parts just make sure everything is fully seated because we do have some tight tolerances here and everything, um, if it's not fully seated, it's not going to fit together right and that would throw off our alignment. So we want to make sure everything is good. So with our left and our right road wheel arms uh, assembled, we can go ahead and, and put them uh, into the main housing there and you just kind of pop them in so figuring out how to do that uh, <laughs> it, was t it can be a little complicated here I'm trying to pry on it and really you don't need to do that you can just put pressure on it and it the, the plastic is very resilient so you don't have to worry a, too much about breaking anything off so if you just put enough pressure on it uh, it'll actually pop right into place 
and uh, TACOM had already, I guess, figured this out for us ahead of time. And don't try to overthink it uh, in this kit because if you do, uh, you're going to make things harder on yourself. And once I figured that out, I decided, well, you know, just go ahead and put pressure on it and uh, get this thing to pop in, uh, which it does. It pops right in. So all that fiddling I did with it, trying to pry things apart, was uh, <laughs> all kind of a wasted effort. Just make sure that you get the correct one on the correct side. Uh, that way the pads that are on the top of the road wheel arms are lining up with that kind of wishbone looking uh, bracket that is supposed to put the, uh, the pressure down on the arms. And you can see here, right where those arms uh, make contact with the top of those road wheel arms. That's uh, what I'm talking about there. As you can see, it is fully functional, and I'm kind of surprised. So now that I've kind of got it figured out, we can go ahead and build up the other five. And there is no left or right. They're all exactly the same, so you don't have to worry about that. So we'll go ahead and build up all the others. Now with all of our road wheel bogies built up, uh, we'll just set those aside and let them really dry up really good. Um, we can go ahead and turn our attention to that water-soluble perfect plastic putty uh, and we can get this cleaned up here on the front of our lower hull. Now I'm just adding water to the surface of it uh, to soften it back up and then we'll come back in with our q-tip or cotton bud if you prefer and we'll just clean it up and it cleans up really easy um, just a matter of uh, wiping over it and then further down into all of the voids and everything the putty will stay and it'll fill up all those little gaps and cracks that we had before and uh, give us a nice finish uh, once it's been painted and as you can see here, uh, it looks pretty good. So I'm kind of happy with that. So we are going to go back to our road wheel arm assemblies here, or bogies. And uh, right where the corner of that bracket, uh, where we had the left and right that we attached, um, it kind of has a little gap right there, and it shouldn't have a gap right there. So we are just going to fill it with the perfect plastic putty and then we'll just clean that up later on after it dries and the good thing about the perfect plastic putty is since it's water based it dries fairly quick and we'll be able to deal with this in short time so moving on to our instructions again we're finally on step three here uh, this is where we attach all of our running gear and our uh, road wheel arms and stuff um, it would be easier to paint all that off, but there's no way to set up the track correctly uh, without the bogies in place. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go ahead and put those on the hull. And they are a good positive fit. Uh, it's not an issue here. Uh, all these parts are fitting really well. And you can't uh, obviously get them upside down. They're, they're only going to fit one way. So I'm just going to lay down just a little bit to me extra thin. Give us a surface to kind of tack it together for us to make sure that we have everything lined up correctly. And it just pops into place there. Unfortunately, there's not enough tension there to hold them into place where we could go ahead and uh, dry fit them on and then do our tracks. So we will go ahead and attach uh, all six of these. Now with all of our road wheels attached, uh, we can go ahead and attach our drive sprocket and then our idler as well. Uh, I did do a little bit of sanding on their pins so that they, well, they're, they're an extremely tight fit. So uh, I wanted to, I didn't want them to stick in place so uh, I uh, went ahead and sanded those down so that uh, we would be able to remove them easily and that's what it looks like and then we have our fully operational suspension 
which uh, we can't leave fully operational. The reason why is because we're going to use the kit parts for our tracks, and if this suspension is moving, that's going to be kind of hard with a link and length type track. So uh, right here where those pads are on top of the road wheel arms and then the wishbone that puts the pressure down on them, uh, I think that's the best place to add a little bit of Tamiya Extra Thin to kind of affix all of these movable parts so that, well, they no longer move. And I know we spent a lot of time putting uh, those bogies together and all those parts, and you're thinking, why in the world do you want to glue that? But, well, it would be impossible uh, uh, to get the track aligned with everything moving around. So I'm just going to weight the vehicle down. I'm just using a bottle of uh, Tester's Thinner here. Um, and then we're just going to put the glue right on those little pads. Uh, sorry, my hand's in the way. Uh, Should have got a better angle there. But um, that's going to secure our uh, suspension into place. And after that sets up, I will go back in and put some more glue on the pivot points for the road wheel arms where they meet up with the housings. That way everything is nice and solid for us when we go to do our track. Speaking of tracks, uh, there is a little bit of cleanup. Uh, there are some ejector pin uh, marks, but they, they are proud of the surface. And I'm just going to take my curved blade X-Acto knife here and just trim them off and then just kind of scrape it down. Uh, or you could sand it as well. I just think it's easier to do it this way. Uh, that way we don't have those pins showing. And of course, you know, when you go to assemble this stuff, uh, after it's painted and everything, chances are these little ejector pin marks are probably going to be aligned just at the correct spot where it's visible. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and clean all these off. Now, when it comes to the separate links, we have two types. We have the ones with the straight end connectors, and then we have the ones with the end connectors that are at an angle. So that's the... Uh, L3 with the straight and the L4 with the bent. So you want to make sure that you don't mix these up and you don't confuse them uh, because that's going to be a problem. The L3s go in the top run of the track and then the L4s obviously are the ones that bend around say the road wheels and the idlers and everything. So now this is the alignment brack or uh, jig I should say that we use for assembling the top section uh, of our track run here. And it's keyed so that you can put the length section uh, of our track into place here. And as you can see though, those guide horns kind of stick down below uh, the, <laughs> the actual jig, which is kind of a problem if you want to lay it on a flat surface. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a piece of wood here uh, Preferably a straight piece of wood. <laughs> that would be a good idea. Um, and I'm just going to clamp it all together here. And I will take and put a third clamp uh, so that everything will set level on my bench. Uh, so I'll just get all this lined up right here. There we go. So as you can see there, it'll set on the bench, and then I can kind of work on those, uh, those links that we need to drop into place. So there is a little bit of fitting here uh, to get these links just to drop in. Just don't remove too much material uh, to make them so loose that uh, there's nowhere for the glue to grab onto. Or I'm sorry, cement. <laughs> so we're going to drop in these sections, and there is a positive stop at the end end of the jig so that you don't put too many links in. So the engineers have figured out that this is exactly how many links we need and I guess we're going to find out whether or not they're correct or not. It always seems to be a gap uh, when you try to put these uh, link and length uh, type tracks together. Now our jig and those links that we need to cement together are all polystyrene. And I am using Tamiya Extra 
thin. So I have to be very careful here uh, to use a fairly dry cement brush. Right? I, I want to make sure that I've got most of the cement off the brush because I don't need it overly free-flowing <laughs> and get down onto our jig because that would glue uh, our track pads right down to it. So we're going to be very careful and make sure that we're not adding uh, too much glue. Just enough glue uh, to get the job done. Uh, I, mean, I mean cement. Yeah, cement. <laughs> And here you can see that's how much track sag that we actually have coming off of our drive sprocket. And once that has set up for us, uh, just give it, you know, a half hour or so, and you should be in good shape here. It's plenty of stiff enough now that we can work with it and not worry about messing up the alignment. So next we'll put this on the actual vehicle and get everything lined up as best we can. So the end shoe there is supposed to be at the very top of the drive sprocket. So we need to get that drive sprocket aligned because that's going to affect all the rest of the run of the track as it goes around. Um, small adjustments may be needed. <laughs> so As we're fitting the track, um, I found it easier to kind of use the uh, uh, Tamiya masking tape here. Uh, so I'm just placing these shoes into place. And we want to get as much of a dry fit as we can on the vehicle. That way we kind of know where all the shoes are supposed to land. And whether or not we're going to have any gaps. And it is a little tedious kind of doing it this way. But... Uh, the, the shape of the shoes, uh, or I should say track pads, uh, kind of is a problem. You can't lay it down flat and tape it all together and then try to make the curve, the turn. Uh, they just won't do it. Uh, I know because I tried it. <laughs> I thought that would be the easiest way. But uh, it, it, if you tape it down flat, that's the way it wants to stay. So you kind of have to tape it into its actual curve. So here we can see with the track all attached, uh, kind of how it all is supposed to lay. Um, however, we do have kind of an issue. Uh, as you go around the back here, you can see that we're kind of spaced out in order to get everything to kind of connect up. So I think probably the best thing to do is go ahead and glue up these curved sections. And as you can see here, see how the spaces are? And then when you curve it up, it, it all kind of comes together. So we'll go ahead and stick this on the uh, uh, drive sprocket here so I can see that the, uh, the actual contact points are in the correct location and we don't have too much space so it looks pretty good but now we can't glue it up with it on the um, on the drive sprocket because we would be gluing it straight to the drive sprocket. So what we're going to do is uh, kind of glue it up off the drive sprocket first. Now we're just concentrating on the end connectors where they connect up to the actual track pads and we'll put the glue on that on on both sides and then just put it onto the drive sprocket so that it can completely dry and get nice and solid for us. Now the good thing about to me extra thin is that after just a few seconds, uh, 10 seconds or so, um, you don't have to worry about it actually sticking to anything other than the parts that you actually put it on. So uh, with that in mind, we will set this uh, drive sprocket aside and let those parts uh, get nice and solid for us. So now when it comes to the track links that goes around our idler, uh, we're going to do basically the same thing. Uh, just making sure that each one of the shoes are in contact uh, with the actual idler and that they are all pressed up against one another. As you can see there, and with them taped into place, I shouldn't have to worry about them moving around. 
And then just like before, uh, when we used very, very little glue uh, to glue just the end connectors, uh, that's what we're going to do here because we do not want to glue <laughs> these track sections uh, to our uh, actual idler because that'll be a problem later on. So we'll be very careful with that. So once this has set up for us, uh, we can just take and untape everything and hopefully everything will come apart the way it's supposed to. So moment of truth here and it should just snap right off. It should just snap right off. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I was getting worried there for a second. Uh, so we have our turn there for the drive sprocket and then hopefully we didn't glue these down to the idler. Nope, we're in good shape. Or, or slag adjuster uh, idler wheel. So we're in good shape there. Now we can move on to putting the track together on the vehicle. So when it came to all of our dry fit and everything, I kind of suspected that we were going to have an issue uh, with the track actually fitting correctly when we get to connecting it. Uh, and as you can see here, we do have a, a space. Um, and either I've done something wrong or maybe that's just the way the kit is. I don't know. Uh, but I do have a space on both sides. So um, we need to do something about that. Now after going through all the sprues again, uh, there, there is actually two spare track pads. And they have the links uh, already attached to them. Now they are on sprue D, and let's see, there they are. Uh, one of them I've already cut off, and then the other one's right there. They don't have a number associated with them, so they... I looked through the instructions and there's nowhere else for a track pad with end connectors on it. So I guess uh, TACOM threw these in there just in case we have a problem. They just didn't tell us about them because they like to keep us in suspense. So <laughs> we were going to be using those. Now it makes the track just a little bit long, but I think that's going to be all right in the end anyway. So here we are with our track uh, all assembled. Now I do have a couple of pieces of foam sponge holding the top run down nice and snug against those return rollers. And right here, uh, we have a joint that is not cemented together for the track. Uh, and, and then in the back above the idler, we also have uh, not cemented. So that top run is uh, a separate piece uh, from the rest of the track. And that'll make it easier for us to remove uh, into paint and if you've ever done link uh, and length tracks or just the link type track it always seems like that w once you get everything fitted perfectly and then you paint it it's too tight so we kind of do have a space uh, around our idler there uh, our slack adjuster but I think that's all going to come out just fine uh, you can't really see it so we're in good shape and that will wrap up uh, part one of our M31. Uh, we got a lot done. It doesn't look like it right now, but uh, um, each one of these bogies had, uh, I think it's 17 pieces. Uh, so 17 times six is 102, plus uh, all the parts for our idler and our drive sprockets as well. So, that's quite a few parts. So, yeah, uh, we did not glue these tracks together. The top run is uh, left separate from the rest of the track. So, hopefully that will help us to remove them and to uh, paint them up uh, later on. And uh, it's just so much easier to do your, your tracks separately from the rest of the vehicle. So, special thanks uh, to uh, all of my subscribers. It's because of you guys that I continue to make these videos, and I hope that you enjoyed this one. And if you're new to the channel and not a subscriber, I hope today I earned your subscription. And if you'd like, I would love to hear from you, so leave me a comment, and uh, don't forget to like the video. So, until next time, guys.
stay safe.